Okay, hopefully you guys all try this, and let me tell you guys that the answer to this right here is equal to pi squared over 12, okay? And if you got this right, you can comment down below and let us know, especially you can share the solutions with us. Okay, first of all, I want to tell you guys that if you want to see how we come up with this result, right, you can check out the videos. I will have the links to those videos in the description for you guys. And second of all, it's not always true. Whenever you have a finite sum of a series, you can just divide it by two and get the sum of its alternating version, okay? It's not always true. Even though in this case, it seems that we just divide it by two, right? But that's not the case all the time. And in this video, I will actually like to do a more general case with you guys when we have this kind of series, okay? Notice that this is the series when n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the p power, and this is just when p is equal to 2, right? And this is so-called the p-series. But, you know, I can also tell you guys that this series is also pretty close related to a famous function in mathematics called the theta function. So let me write that down for you guys. This is called the theta function, all right? And uh, it's denoted by the theta like this, okay, theta. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is the best I can draw the theta. But anyway, the input here we'll be using is s, all right? And this is defined to be the sum when n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the s power, all right? This is a really famous Riemann zeta function, okay? All right, and for this one, it's just the alternating version of that, and this is called the eta, okay? E-T-A. <laughs> and the eta, that you, you write it like this. This is like the n, but not. Nah. And this is eta of s is just the sum where n goes from 1 to infinity, and it's just the alternating version of that. So you write down negative 1 raised to the n minus 1 power over n to the s power. And now you can see that this right here is just pretty much theta of 2, right? When s is equal to 2 right here. And this right here is pretty much when eta, uh, when s is equal to 2 inside of the eta function, okay? And once again, this is a really famous uh, function in mathematics. And I know some of you guys have seen it before. And today, let's see if we can come with any connection between this and that, right? So that's actually my main goal in this video this kind of series, this kind of function. So this is what we're going to do. As you can see, they are pretty similar. They are just, you know, one's just the original and the other one's just the alternating version. What we'll do is we'll take theta and then minus eta, okay? So let me just write this down right here. Uh, I'll put this down. This is my theta of s minus eta. This is the eta. The, 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 this right here is longer and then s. Okay, first of all, we can really just put on this minus that with summations, but I think it's easier if you write down the first few terms. So I will do that. So for this right here, let me just plug in n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on into this right here. So for theta of s, the first term is just going to be 1 over 1 to the s power, and then you add it with the next one, which is 1 over 2 to the s power, and the next one is 1 over 3 to the s power. These are s, they are not 5, okay? But anyway, plus 1 over 4 to the s power, and so on forever. This is the theta function. Now we will have to subtract, and for the eta function, I will write this down in blue. So we pretty much will have the alternating version of that. The first term is going to be 1 over 1 to the s power, and the next term is going to be minus 1 over 2 to the s power, and then plus 1 over 3 to the s power, minus 1 over 4 to the s power, and so on forever. All right? And now, let's see if there's anything that we can do. Yes, because notice, this is 1 over... 1 to the s power, and we are minusing another 1 over 1 to the s power. So of course, this and that canceled each other out. Next, we have 1 over 2 to the s, minus minus become plus, so plus another 1 over 2 to the s. So we have two of them, right? And let me just write this down as 2 times 1 over 
2 to the s, like that. And the next term, this is 1 over 3 to the s, but you minus 1 over 3 to the s, so this and that cancel each other out. And then if you continue, this plus, right, another one, so we can write it down as plus 2 times 1 over 4 to the s. And by now, you should see that all the odd terms will be cancelled in each other out, and all the even terms will survive, right? And in all, you will have two of them. So you can imagine the next one is going to be 2 times 1 over 6 to the s power, and then the next one is going to be 2 times 1 over 8 to the uh, s power, and so on. Right? And now, I am going to take a look of this and then put it back into the summation form. To do so, let's take a look right here. This is 2 to the s, but you know 2 is the same as 2 times 1. We can write this down as 2 to the s times 1 to the s, right? And then for the 4, it's like the same as 2 times 2. And I can put this down as 2 to the s times 2 to the s. And the 6 is like 2 times 3, so we can do 2 to the s times 3 to the s, like that, okay? And now, notice, the things that's changing is the 1 here, the 2 here, the 3 here, and the next one's going to be 4, right, in that, and so on. And now we are going to put this back into the summation form. So notice that everybody has the 2, right? So let's put that down first. And then everybody right here has 2 to the s in the denominator. So I'm just going to factor that to the front as well. So I will write that down as 2 over 2 to the s power, okay? And now, you see, this is the remaining part, and we have the 1 to the s, 2 to the s, 3 to the s in the denominator. I will put them down in the summation for now. The sum, when n, this is where the n comes in. n goes from 1 to infinity, and then everybody has the 1 on the top, over 1, 2, 3 to the s power, right? So that's the n, and then raised to the s power power like this, all right? So now, what's this part? Well, this is exactly the theta, right? So I can actually write this down for you guys. This is like saying 2 to the first power over 2 to the s power. We can just subtract the exponents and say this is 2 to the 1 minus s power. And for this part, I will just write this down as the theta of s. So what we have is that Theta minus eta, it's equal to 2 to the 1 minus s power times theta. Pretty cool, huh? And I want to show you guys how to isolate the eta because that's why I want you to solve right here, okay? And let me just write down the equation again. So we see that theta of s minus eta of s, this is equal to this right here, right? 2 to the 1 minus s times theta of s. And this is what I'm going to do. I am going to just subtract this on both sides, and then we will add eta of s on both sides. And now, of course, we have eta of s on the right-hand side, but let me put that down right here first, eta of s. This right here is equal to, look at the left-hand side. We have theta here and theta here, so of course we can factor that out, and let me just put that at the end. And let me just write this down first. This is as saying 1 times theta. So we will have 1 minus that, 2 to the 1 minus s. And then we have the theta at the end right here. Okay? So this right here is a beautiful connection between eta and theta. Okay? Really cool, isn't it? And now to figure this out, I can just plug in that s equal to 2. And now, we know s is equal to 2, so we have this is equal to 1 minus 2 raised to the 1 minus 2 power, because s is equal to 2. And then we have theta of 2, like this. And theta of 2 is exactly that. So let's do some math in our head. This is 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. So this right here is equal to 1 half times that, which is pi square over 6, and of course, in the end, we get pi squared over 12, alright? Very nice result, isn't it?